So literally, if you have, sometimes you just want to sit and point. Kevin, the designer, is fantastic. Uh, 18 days away from the exhibition opening at the mu museum, and, and scary, the, photograph it. the photographs going out on the street and everything else. Um, but in fact, there's a lot happening before then. So um, we, we we really are uh, on the verge, which which is great. But. And in, in very day, um, which is an evening performance, which again you're all very welcome to attend. <laughs> 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 running the, the Squat Life project um, that was inspired by the photographs of Dave Catula, who was a squatter in the area in the 1980s. I want to say a huge thank you to Metro Bank. <laughs> it's really, really cool. I'm, I'm Peter Graham. I'm a trustee with Centre 33, which is a drop-in centre in St Albans, which provides food, drinks, showers, some second-hand clothes for rough sleepers and for other people who live in, I suppose, what you might call precarious accommodation. I, I thought tonight's film was excellent because the, there, there was such a ring of truth about the life of the people involved. I mean, not just Hector, but the other homeless people he met. Keeping to a regime of medication and everything else clearly wasn't easy somebody like that. And it's one of the things I think a lot of people don't appreciate that when you're rough people. You don't have a sort of rhythm of life that enables you to have clean socks, take your tablets, go to appointments and so on as easily as those of us who live, you know, a relatively straightforward life do. I think the Squat Life is a great initiative because it's bringing in front of sort of the general population in St Albans who don't perhaps become involved with our charity or the Open Door Night Shelter. It's giving them an idea about what's involved in uh, rough sleeping, being homeless and all that. And I think it's a great initiative. Okay, uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Squat Life. And I'm absolutely delighted to be here and join you all for what's I think an extremely interesting and socially important exhibition. It's hosted by St Albans Arts Team and has been funded by the National Lottery, awarded by the Heritage Lottery Fund. And it's one of the most far-reaching exhibitions about homelessness for years, anywhere, I think. Um, a huge amount of work has gone into creating this exhibition and related. Um, thank you, everybody. I hope huge numbers of people will come and look at this fantastic exhibition, which really does shed light both historically and today, on something we should all be aware of. So thank you all for coming. Uh, I don't really expect to be making a speech, but here I am. Here I am. Um, I'm really grateful to Graham, really, and, and to Janet Muckham at Millen, wherever she is in the background. Yeah, so for pushing me along to do something really serious with my photos. Really good to be in here tonight and actually have my pictures and show a bit of humanity of the people who I've grown up with and my, my real close friends from those squatting days. You know, we was a community of people, we've done so much together. I still know loads of them today. I'm really, really happy. And loads of them can make it here tonight. We love you, Dave. Family. <laughs> Family, yeah. yeah. As you know, I'm very political. You know, for me, I had a really, really safe, secure home to grow up in. I'm really aware that a lot of people around me didn't, and you know, and I'm, that's the issue we have today. A lot of very vulnerable people are living on the streets around this place and across the country, and it's a complete disgrace. And we should do something about it. And really, that's that's really what I've got to say. I've got nothing more to say. You know, What struck me about St Albans is the difference that there is, historically. 
the, the town we see today and the town we've been reflecting on this, this evening is, is rightly or wrongly a prosperous place. Historically that hasn't been the case always. It's a town that stagnated in the 17th and the 18th and 19th centuries and only recently has got to a level uh, of the prosperity that to a degree we see around us today. My little project with Hearts Young Homeless, these guys are fantastic. They're looking for a home. And the ignorance that everybody has to the homeless is quite sad. And unjustified, actually. These guys are working hard. We need to find a place and support for Hertfordshire young homeless people, amongst other people too. So the exhibition by Dave and facilitated by myself, but with all the people from Hearts Young Homeless, is worth a look just to wake up a little bit of ignorance that we all have for these people who are trying to find a home. Well done. Thank you, Dave, for bringing this. I nearly cried when I walked around the corner and saw it because all the things I've been talking about, um, this is theatre, this building's theatre. So the scale of some of the images, those big black and white ones that they blew up, uh, that took up nearly the wall, wow, what an impact. And there's one which is the cathedral entrance, which had a big impact on me because I was the mayor, the 469th mayor of St Albans four years ago. And one of the things we do is to sleep out uh, on a very cold night uh, for, the, for the homeless outside the cathedral and it was at that spot that I slept in my sleeping bag so to actually see that blown up and you know, part of Scottish life all those years ago it was, it was incredible to you know, bring the whole circle back somehow yeah, I think it's wonderful very emotional very nostalgic you know for us and it's, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to think that the last time I was outside this building, we were sitting on the front smoking illicit substances, putting a finger up to the man because this was a representation of his building and his government. And now we're in here, the town hall at the time. Yeah, seeing photographs of ourselves and people around us and seeing the whole thing embraced. Whereas before we sat outside feeling that we were apart from it and the margins of it, and now we can come here and feel that it's been embraced fully and it's relevant to a new generation of people who have problems with homelessness and poverty and all the same problems but have come back more sharp than to focus. So it's fantastic to see something that helped us out, helped me out tremendously from being a wishy-washy falling through the cracks to feeling embraced by the people in this room and it's given me confidence and I've been able to live my life and then to see that it's celebrated here when it's relevant to other people still, it's a fantastic thing. And hats off to Dave Katula. Well, there's people outside around the corner sitting outside the front of the shops and Dave went there and invited them into this thing because you don't want to just think oh well, we've done all right and we'll forget about that. That's a nice little happy story we've finished. It's, it's an ongoing thing that I personally am proud to have been a part of and grateful to these people that they took me into the bosom of their little thriving community which wasn't always wonderful. There was always problems and problematic situations but it was inclusive and it was positive and it took you. It didn't matter what you brought, no matter what failures you brought with you, they encouraged you. It was, it was a wonderful thing and I'm happy to be part of it. Me too. <laughs> the exhibition is really good. It's an awesome exhibition. And I'm so glad that Dave got the opportunity to share our photos with the world. Yeah. And this picture up here, this is us. This is the day up there that I left home. And she was welcomed into it. Yes, yes. She looked after me. It was just time for me to leave home. And I found friends, which were my family, people that cared about me and loved me for who I was, and not because they had to. So they took me under their wing. And Dave Petula was always like a big brother to me and made me feel very safe. And it was a safe and loving environment for us to live in. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I hope it opens up um, and lets people know how hard it is for some people to get on in life. Um, there's people out there now sleeping in doorways of shops and they just get walked past when they need help 
and um, for us it was a lot easier because we could live in houses um, and we took great care of the houses that we lived in and it was a community feeling and we all cared about each other and looked out for each other but nowadays they're all on their own and there's no one looking after them which is really sad. So we're here in St Albans with Cardboard Citizens. It's our first time in Hertfordshire, so we're really, really excited to hear about the stories that are coming out of these uh, sort of smaller towns, smaller cities. We specialise in a thing called Forum Theatre, which uh, allows the audience to get on stage and have a go at solving the problems that the characters face. I really enjoyed today's session. I'm really surprised, actually, because everyone was really friendly and I was really impressed that everyone dived in and just joined in and it was really good meeting some young people. But it seems a wonderful opportunity to um, share the experience in St Albans because things like being poor and being homeless isn't kind of front and centre because it's such a rich neighbourhood. I'd like people to feel like they can recognise that everyone's important Everyone has a voice and they're all valued. begun to find the story of St Albans and uh, the experience of being homeless in St Albans. So next week it's a matter of putting all these little scenes together and just starting to rehearse and running and the whole group were really excited. And we uh, thought about St Albans and what this housing situation means and the the farmers you see tonight have a range of experience. Not all of them are street homeless, but certainly are aware of the consequences of the housing situation. So now, um, I'm going to introduce the young women over here. Come on, Lorraine. <laughs> they won't bite, they won't bite. So, uh, ov obviously, for many of us, this is the first time we've, they look right, don't they? Yeah. yeah, they look right. Um, actually performed. But as you watch this story, all I want you to do as you watch it is ask yourself, what might you have done differently had you been in the rain shoes? Because she is up against difficult people, difficult situations. So just love those moments and think about what you might have done differently. Cool. <laughs> You'll be fine. Ladies and gentlemen, trespassers, welcome. Well, I, I mean, I thought the performance was, um, um, was excellent, considering it's only taken a week. I don't think I could have um, taken on board what they've done in a, in a week and uh, been able to come out so confidently. And the other thing I thought was impressive was how, when the interaction with the audience came along, how they reacted to that in a, in a very confident way. Nobody gets on any better than when they're being praised for the good things that they're doing. And, and if you speak to the homeless in the town, um, most of them, they've all got a different story. They, um, they all come up and thereby the grace of God go any of us who's ever been through our lives and gone through hard times. And um, you just need to take on board and, and just react positively to them and not be condescending and, sim you know, and don't give too much sympathy because that's not what people want. They just want some support and confidence. Um, like I've cocked up today 
and <laughs> I've messed up today. But I just, I've got a lot going on at the moment. Like I've got a landlord, or I've got to leave, or I might be potentially homeless. And you know, I'm trying really hard to keep it together, but it's just nerves. I'm, I understand you've got to keep standards here, but when I'm cutting someone's hair and I'm not doing it too, too well, and you're sort of telling me that I'm doing it wrong, it's making me more nervous. Which is why anyway, I'm... let's forget about that for now. I've been looking at the voter also Tuesday today. <laughs> So, last two weeks, where do I start from? You know, the first two sad days have to be the crucial days. That's because that's where you meet everyone. Second week was, could be, I could call it easy. Though it wasn't easy, it was a lot of work. There is a lot of work, though the people that you've got around you, the people that were around me, they were really supportive and everybody supported each other. In general, it was a nice experience and I wish everybody was here and if you're watching this, come along or try it out. But it has been rather wonderful as always to watch a group of people who have never stood on a stage before and, uh, and suddenly create a piece of art. That's what they did, they told a story, a rather moving story, you know. A whole load of stuff goes into that to get to that point where really. what they uh, had to overcome to even get into through the door and commit that after that day after day of doing sort of weird stuff being out of their comfort zone but I have to say uh, there's a kind of a little mother hen uh, once she sort of saw that they were ready and wanted it and uh, there was a bit of yesterday going mm, I can't do it can you get someone else which was like, probably not. Um, but, but it was just joyous. It was just joyous to watch. There were some that didn't get to the end of the 10 days, and, but they still did, and they still brought something to the process. And, you know, we'll, that we'll remember them and make sure that they know that we'll be you know, deeply grateful that they put their time and energy into it as well. They didn't get to the end because their life sometimes doesn't allow them to. It's as simple as that, you know. Not because they wouldn't want to. So I want to remember those people too. I enjoyed doing it. I was like trying, looking at new information and you, when you start to look at these things, you then start disappearing down little rabbit holes and thinking, oh, that's interesting and going off little tangents and finding things. But I think it worked quite well. It did give a flavour of how the poor are always with us. Um, people have been struggling to try and deal with it and it's one of those intractable problems that Sadly, I don't think we'll ever really get to grips with, but I think it's illuminating to see how it was dealt with in the past. Strangers coming into towns were often viewed as the source of all crime, and again, that resonates today. Uh, sadly, history keeps repeating itself, but so that was my response to doing Spot Life, that there was a lot about the current 20th century, but I felt doing before 1900, it just showed what had been going on before. This is nothing new, we're still trying to grapple with it. And so it just helped to set the problem of homelessness today in context. This isn't a new problem, it's a difficult one to solve. And we do perhaps just have to keep trying to think of ways to do it. And we are in some ways more compassionate than we were. I suppose really it's just informing people about what we did in the past. So today we've been doing a workshop with families and children from St Albans at the museum. We've been making little felt wish houses, thinking about the homeless people living on the streets and the kind of things that make a home a happy place to live and the kind of things you need in your life like food, shelter, so all those kinds of things we've been thinking about today when we've been making our colourful houses with different layers of felt and sticking things on. So I asked the children to think about the kind of home that they would love to live in, the kind of home they would like 
to, to make for someone who's homeless to live in? No. 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 By the hair on our chin chin chin, we will not let you in. Not for all the tea leaves in our china teapot. Then I'll huff and I'll huff and I'll blow your house down and you get one word three times. What word do you think? Exactly. No, no. Gone by, and it seems like and there are a team of us from a local history group called Lisa Torbans and Hertfordshire Architecture and Archaeological Society. We were asked to do research for these eight panels. Actually, when we compared it with Dave's work with the photographs of the squats from the 80s, homeless people don't have a voice. And what Dave has given, and what we've tried to do with our panels is try and find remnants of their lives and give voice to how, what they experienced. These are actual documents um, relating to people who couldn't prove their settlement in St Albans and so were relocated um, to back to their place of original settlement. And in the case of uh, one lady who had four children, the youngest only three weeks old, um, she was sent back to Hackney, which back in this period, which we're talking about the 16, 1700s, would have taken days. And hopefully it was by cart rather than making her walk with all her tiny children. But it just shows, in a way, homelessness is an internal problem. Refugees are a, an internal problem. People can find themselves refugees back in that period and even earlier. I, I squatted in the, in the 90s. Um, over in Hitchin and um, you know so I, I got to really understand what it's like to live outside of, of, the, of the norm, outside of society and the problems that, that, that you face while doing that and so coming around looking at like Dave's amazing photography just reminded me of, I mean these are all squats in the 80s but not very dissimilar to, to the squats in the 90s you know the same kind of characters and uh, you know, there's always someone called Wurzel um, or Spider. You know, there's always Rizzlers everywhere and stuff like that. And um, just really reminded me of that sense of community and that sense of love and belonging, you know, that, that we had. Um, and of course, people just think that we were, you know, we were punks and we were ne'er-do-wells and, you know, should be uh, scraped off of, the, off of the streets. But actually what we were doing was, was reacting, you know, to, uh, to a system that we felt was failing and it's failed the individual um, and we wanted to do what we wanted to do so yeah that's why I'm involved in it now you know it doesn't matter what walk of life you're from um, you know try and leave all of your perceptions of what homelessness is um, at the door um, and come in and just look at the photography um, you know try and see past as well um, the fact that some of it looks a bit dirty <laughs> yeah and see beneath that and see the smiles on people's faces the love that is in people's eyes the happiness that is experienced um, that that's shown in these photos um, and, and just try and sort of close your you know change your mind to, to what you understand homelessness to be um, and try and absorb something new I think it's gone really well you know I've had a been really good, you know, just letting people see my pictures and showing them a bit of uh, the life back in St Albans in the 80s. So yeah, yeah it's, I think it's been really successful in highlighting the homelessness issues today. Well, yeah, it's, it's keeping your mind open. It's like, you know, just be aware of what's going on around you. You know, uh, it isn't just, you know, that everyone's stuck in their own little lives. And uh, a town like St Albans is very affluent and people really do need to look after the whole community and, um, you know, and be aware of what's going on around you.